Hi, my name is what? My name is who? My name. Tick it, tick it. I'm not slim. I'm definitely shady. I'm definitely shady. Like skin tone. My skin tone is shady. Not like my personality. I'm, I'm, an, I'm an honest, nice. You know what? Let's not worry about it. In this video, we're in Lightroom, and I'm going to give you seven of the most common editing mistakes I see photographers making, and I'm going to give you solutions on how to fix them. My name is Pi, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and SLRLounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. Hello, my friend. My name is Pi. Welcome to Adorama TV. It's wonderful being back here with y'all. So look, no time for dilly dallying. You're busy. I'm well, really, you're busy. So let's dive straight into this. We have seven different common editing mistakes that I see photographers making all the time. I'm gonna give you some tools and suggestions on how I like to kind of work through things to address those areas. Starting with numero uno, white balance. So oftentimes we get a wrong white balance in camera. We forget to dial it in or it's too cold or it's too warm. And wrong is a heavy word because there is quite a bit of a subjective nature when it comes to white balance. Some people like to shoot a little bit on the warm side. Raise your hand because yours truly is on that side. And some people like to be more on the cool side. But let's go ahead and dive into Lightroom. I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. So this is a great time to pause. Make sure you have the exercise file loaded up or load up an image of your choice. I have here a raw file. This image was actually captured, if you see in this video, with me lowering down my camera right down to the ground and using the puddle to create a reflection of Renee while framing her between the two buildings. Now you'll notice when it comes to the white balance that I, I do have it dialed in. I would suggest Number one, just dial in your white balance with every scene that you go to. Make this a habit that you just automatically do. But look, oftentimes you might forget or maybe you let the camera decide for you and you end up with something too cool. On other cases, you might leave it in say shade and you go out and start shooting and you end up with something way too warm. So how do you know when something is too cold or too warm and then how would I kind of go about fixing it? Number one, Ideally, you shoot RAW because if you shoot JPEG, you really need to make sure that all the settings are dialed in in camera because those are baked in. So over a JPEG, you can tweak temperature, but you don't have full control over it like you do with a RAW file. I can adjust temperature with a RAW file and it's exactly the same as if I were to adjust temperature in camera. It's not that way with a JPEG. But look, when something's too warm, to me, it means that I'm seeing yellows in areas of the image where there really shouldn't be. So there is a little bit of yellow tinting in the paint on this building, right? But in the blues, there's really no yellow there naturally. So when I start seeing yellows appearing in blues, I know that I've gone kind of too far. So I can bring it back and you can start to see like right around here, we can still maintain the warmth and skin tone and even see some of the yellows in the building, but the blue doesn't become tinted. So that's my number one sign that I've gone too far is I start seeing yellows in colors that there really shouldn't be. How about when we're too cold? This is very common and it makes images almost look like they were shot on a phone because phones have a tendency to be on that cooler side. Well, it's almost the same thing, but this time I'm looking at the warm tones. When I'm looking at things that are naturally yellow and I'm seeing blue tones in them, then I know I've gone to the kind of cold side. I almost wanted to say dark side. But look, simple fix here. I want you guys inside of Lightroom to press W. This is gonna select your white balance selector. And I know a lot of you guys already know this specific kind of, you know, tool and technique. Again, we're starting simple. We're gonna keep layering into these common mistakes that I see. But what you might not know is that the white balance selector is not actually for, you don't need to select something that's white. If you read right on there, it actually says pick target neutral. So all you have to do is select something that's neutral in the scene. This could be anything from white to gray to darker kind of gray, almost black, as long as there's no other colors in it. So great places to start is like the lapel, 
we could zoom in if we have enough of the whites of the eyes we could actually click the whites of the eyes here we don't quite have enough of it but another great place is teeth assuming that they're relatively clean teeth um, even the building will get us somewhat close to that area right so the only thing it doesn't work on is if something goes completely white or if it goes completely black then you can't click on it but even the hydrant would get us somewhere close so that's a great technique to kind of use to get you in the ballpark one other technique that I want to show you guys is this. I like to, because this often helps with tint. A lot of times people don't know how to adjust tint, right? So what I like to do is actually bring my temperature all the way to this point. And let's say our tint is kind of messed up. It's on the green side. Well, when I bring my white balance to a neutral point, like right here, you can actually start seeing the tint reveal itself very nicely. So at a neutral white balance, at a neutral temperature, I should say, tint becomes very, very noticeable. So you can actually start working it. If you're too far on the magenta side, you notice everything in the scene is magenta. If it's too far on the green side, you notice everything is green. So what I like to do is dial temperature to that neutral point. Then you find the spot where tint is kind of zeroed out, where the tint is not on the magenta side, it's not on the green side, it's somewhere in between, and you're getting just these nice kind of blue hues, these neutral tones. Then zoom into skin tone or whatever area and start raising your temperature, okay? In a complex scene, it's a really simple way of getting to the right white balance by simply going to a neutral temperature, then adjusting tint, and temp uh, tint to magenta or green side, and then going back to temperature after the fact. But here we're, we're pretty good where we're at. For this image, I'm gonna leave us around 5750. Most common mistake number two is forgetting to straighten out your lines. Now this can be a horizon line, it could be building and architectural lines, it doesn't matter. It kind of makes an image look like it lacks polish. Now here, we have building lines, we don't necessarily see the horizon, although I can kind of see that if I press R and rotate the image, there is kind of a horizon back there, like right along this line that I can sort of straighten out. There are several different tools for doing this. If you have a visible horizon line, then you can obviously just kind of use the cropping tool, press R, and you can just straighten it along that line. You can also use the straighten tool. So with the straighten tool, all you do is you select something, drag it across something that is actually supposed to be straight, and then Lightroom fixes it for you. But watch this, I'm gonna reset this, I'm gonna show you another simple way of doing this that works on lots of images. So if you jump down to the transform menu, <laughs> section, whatever. If you jump down here, you'll notice that you have the ability to actually correct certain things like level, vertical. What I like to do is actually select auto. Now what auto does is it generally finds a nice balance between everything. It's not gonna perfectly fix the lines. It's going to find a good balance between them. See, if you select vertical, then it goes pretty extreme and it makes sure that the building lines are perfectly straight, but I don't want that. I want it just to be a little bit tuned and a little bit better. I kind of want some of the perspective distortion that I have in the shot and that's why I like using the auto function it does a good job of kind of landing you in between and fixing a lot of those issues number three is to clean up your crop <laughs> that kind of that's nice you could say crap yeah. anyway what I'm saying is is use the cropping tool to actually dial you in a little bit further to whatever type of composition you were going for so for this particular shot I would say that this is you know, kind of a, a mixture between leading lines. We have a little bit of rule of thirds in there. We, we have all those things going on. But if I press R, I can actually cycle my cropping overlay. You notice right now that it's on rule of thirds. Press O to cycle to a different overlay, okay? From here, you can use these built-in overlays to help you adjust your crop to dial in a little bit further to what you're going for. The most common mistakes that I see is people going for symmetry but it's not quite symmetrical. Or people going for rule of thirds, but it's not quite there. They, the, you're just off on the line. It's just not quite symmetrical. So fix the crop. So for this image, I'm gonna go back to rule of thirds. Let's go ahead and just pull this in a little bit and I'm gonna bring this up a bit. So basically we have a little bit more of her right on that line and we're gonna punch into the image. And I feel like it becomes that much stronger now with that dialed in, okay? So we get a little bit closer onto the image and we kind of dial in further into the right composition by correcting the crop. Now remember, what I'm saying here is get your compositions right in camera 
don't rely on the cropping tool to help you dial everything in. Use that as just a final adjustment. Number four is bad contrast. So this is either an image that's too flat or it's too punchy. So on the too flat side, I often see people dropping highlights, dropping whites, raising shadows, raising blacks, and you get this gnarly HDR look, uh, and it's not the good HDR, it's, it's, it's a bad HDR, where you've really flattened out all the contrast. And yes, you could go and pump up contrast, but then you just end up with hypersaturated colors, okay? So the other side is essentially this, where people would you know, pump up contrast too much, they would go straight to the contrast slider or start dropping blacks and start bringing the you know white points and and you get to this place where your whites are basically all blown out and your blacks are completely clipped meaning when you print the blacks go to pure black and the whites go to pure white and there's too much of them but what is a good balance that's the tough part what I like to say is that an image should always have, if you want to have good contrast in an image, you do need some areas of the image that are pure white and some areas that are pure black or at least close to it. You don't want it to be flattened out, but you don't want it to go too far either. Your best friend for this tool or for this, uh, this adjustment is going to be the highlight and clipping alert. So you're going to press J to bring up the highlight and clipping alert. And what it's going to do is it's going to tell you whenever the blacks get too deep and whenever the whites get too bright. So what I'll do here is adjust my highlights maybe down a little bit. I'll take my white point kind of down a little bit, maybe bring the shadows up a little and bring my blacks down. And now I start to see a little bit of blue in those areas where I'm losing shadows. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with a little bit of those blues. Like similarly, I don't want to go up where I start seeing like, you know, highlights being blown out, but I do want to see some whites in the image. So I'm going to go ahead and bring a little bit of the highlights up now and start kind of tuning this. So I don't want pure whites, but I want this nice balance where it's kind of bright and we have some shadows and we kind of work this mixture. Now look at what happens to the histogram. It opens up we start showing more in the highlight range, we start showing more in the shadow range. And what I would say is, as always, leave contrast as your last adjustment. Let this thing kind of be the, the final piece of contrast that you add. Don't let that be the how you're adding contrast, it's too heavy handed. So I always wait till I'm done dialing and everything and I use contrast for fine tuning. Number five, bad vignettes. So these are vignettes that are just too strong. They're very noticeable. So watch, I'm going to press shift M to bring up my radial filter tool. I'm going to go ahead and select a burn brush and I'm going to drop it right over her. And a bad vignette is one that's ex very noticeable. Okay. So when you look at the image, it looks like you've done something to it. The best way that I know to kind of see if you have a bad vignette is actually to zoom out. So if you press G to go back to grid view, you'll notice bad vignettes right here automatically because you see that darkening effect over everything. So what I like to say is on images that are generally bright out to the edges, I don't actually like to use a vignette at all. So this is one of those cases where I actually want the edges to be bright all the way through because I don't want it to look vignetted. So when we're looking to add a vignette, what we're looking for is subtlety. We want to subtly draw the eyes into the brightest area of the photograph without allowing the viewer to kind of see past the curtain and know what we're doing, if that makes sense. So I'm going to go ahead and add a radial burn, but I'm going to keep it on the subtle side. So we're going to go ahead and do a burn. I'm going to make sure that it's inverted. So we're affecting the outside area, not the inside area. There we go. Not inverted. Okay. And then what we're going to do is make the adjustment kind of subtle. So like a 0.3 is about right. I'm going to bring it into her maybe 0.4. And now it's just this subtle darkening as it leads into our subject. A couple quick general rules when it comes to vignetting. The brighter the edges of your image are, the less I want to vignette them. So if I shot a dark or more dramatic looking image, then I can tend to turn up the vignetting a bit without it being noticeable. When my edges are very bright, then I generally leave vignetting off or keep it very subtle like we've done on this image. Number six is leaving in background clutter and distractions that could easily be removed. Now, for most of this kind of stuff, I do like to jump into Photoshop, but you can do quite a bit inside of Lightroom as well. Let me show you. So for things like this, like dust specs, 
I, I, I do those in, in Lightroom, that's easy. But when it comes to like removing a sign, you'll get better results inside of Photoshop. That said, we can still use the spot removal tool. What I would do in a scene like this is keep the feather a little bit low. And I'm just gonna use my mouse and kind of highlight the sign first. Okay. And let go. And it does a pretty good job of actually replicating and, uh, and, and kind of fixing it. And we're gonna do the same thing for the fire hydrant right here. Again, we're using a, a subtle feather a very kind of more hard edge for this because it's not going to do a great job if we if we really try to make it a subtle transition with that broad feather basically so i'm using this because it's it does a better job inside of lightroom these little duplicate patterns it's sometimes annoying because you want to remove those but you can't actually draw again inside so what i'll often do is draw from the outside and then make my way in uh, and then you just got to point it to an area that will actually work. Okay, so you just point it to an area that works. So we've now cleaned up that, and I'm gonna do the same thing with distractions. So things that I find distracting are dark spots over bright areas, or light spots over dark areas like this one. If it subtly blends in, like this one was kind of you know in between, but when it blends in, I'm not really worried about it. What I'm worried about is more so when it draws the eye to it, okay? So this spot is again, something that I would kind of clean up. And interestingly, just this basic cleanup of a background, yeah, Lightroom did a fantastic job there. You're right, I wanted to sample from there and go straight to the wall. No, that's, that's not what I wanted. Uh, this basic cleanup does wonders for the image. If I were to actually just turn this off for a second, just that little adjustment really does so much in cleaning up the photograph. It's a very interesting thing. Removing a few background distractions goes a really long way in creating a much more polished image. Last but not least, forgetting to creatively use dehaze. So Adobe created the dehaze slider right here in the presence panel to basically add back contrast in scenes where you have fog or haze or whatever it might be, right? but it does a beautiful job of adding contrast when used subtly to really everything other than skin tones. Now the key here is subtly. So if you pull this to the left side, it's actually gonna decrease contrast and add kind of this fog to an image. When you pull it to the right side, it adds back contrast. The problem is once you start getting up here, it becomes really, really crunchy again, adding too much. But a gentle pop between 20 and 30 does a beautiful job of just making the blues pop, really seeing through and, and giving everything a bit of a more vibrant look to it. Now here are a couple bonus tips. I like to use clarity to add mid-tone contrast. My general rule there is when I'm pulled back for a wide shot, I'm usually adding a bit of clarity. When I'm really in tight on a shot, I'm usually subtracting a bit. Anywhere in the minus 20 to plus 20 kind of range, if you start going too high, you get that grungy kind of look again. Uh, here I'm gonna go to like maybe plus 25. One final bonus tip, one thing that I love doing is actually doing a subtraction of saturation. So I'm gonna pull saturation down by negative 15, anywhere between negative 10 and negative 20 is fine. And then what I'll do is actually boost vibrance. Now what this does is the saturation kind of pulls all the color tones down. Vibrance adds it back in, in just the areas that are essentially not skin tones. So I can kind of end up with a more punchy, more blue, more vibrant look to any photograph by doing this little trick while kind of maintaining skin tones. So a couple bonus tips for you. Once I get vibrance to kind of where I like it, I usually add back that saturation to get the skin tone back to where I want it. Again, another really quick and simple way of just enhancing existing color. So with those basic adjustments, I want you guys to see the before versus the after because it's absolutely night and day. So the image on the left is straight out of camera and it's a good photograph. It's what I see a lot of photographers posting, but every time I see it, I go, man, just a couple small fixes and you can really dramatically enhance the image like what you see on the right side. I hope y'all enjoyed this video and tutorial. If you did, I'd love for you guys to comment below, let me know what you think. And of course, as always, subscribe to the Adorama TV channel. If you guys wanna be notified with all of the awesome videos that are going up every day, then go ahead and turn on notifications as well. Meantime, y'all can follow me at Pygirsa on Instagram or at Born on Creative on TikTok, and I'll see you all in the next video or next week, whatever comes first. Uh, or at the same time. Yeah. I'm gonna stop talking now.